Good morning from Animal Kingdom. Today we have something very special planned. We have the Wild Africa Trek. Yes. So cannot wait. We have an early time. We have 8.45 a.m. So. First tour of the day. Yeah. So just checked in, bright and early. Ready to go. And got the basic information, as in no bathroom for two hours. Yes. Wearing a harness and walking a lot. Yeah. And needing to take off your magic bands. Right. A anything that's not like secured, like extra secured. Like has a Fitbit band that has a double strap is fine, but your magic band it can pop off easily. So they take that off, put in, they, they provide lockers and everything. So, but yeah, very excited for this, and let's take you along. Okay, so obviously we are not in Animal Kingdom anymore. Hi from the future. Yes. We had such a fun-filled day, very busy day, very tiring day, that we never really recorded anything past what you saw um, of us. We've recorded a lot of things happening and whatnot, so this video is going to be a little bit different, just kind of talking through what we did and showing you everything we saw on the, on the Wild Africa track. And how awesome it was. Yes. Very, very cool. Um, so first things first, price-wise for it, it is $1.99 per person for ages 8 and up. You have to be 8 to do this special tour. Uh, for pass holders, they do have a discount. It's $169. Uh, both those are plus tax. It's a three-hour tour, and you get two kind of VIP guides. Ours was Je uh, Jenny and Jason, and basically how they kind of traded off was one of them was taking pictures while the other one was doing more of like the tour guide aspect of the whole experience. Mm -hmm. So right after the point we just saw, first we went to go to our lockers, drop all our stuff off, get all of our gear and whatnot. Um, they do give you a little water bottle that is a keepsake that does say Wild Africa Trek, um, as well as name tags that are also keepsakes, just a little So button. they also know who you are. Yes, and so they know who you are for picture purposes and whatnot. It's a very small group. I think it's max 12 in the group. We had 10. Mm -hmm. And some people did not attend. Yes. There was a guy in our party who's, I think he said his parents, mm -hmm. did not attend. Right. But we pretty much had all ages. We had a family who had a young daughter, I would guess like tween age. Mm -hmm. And then we had a group of four probably in their 60s, maybe 70s. Yeah, I was going to guess maybe early 70s. So, all ages, it is very active. Yeah. You have to be comfortable with like hiking because there are parts where you're kind of hiking through like the woods and over like tree roots and stuff like that. Um, and but, then... But you start by getting gear. Yes. And the first step of getting your gear is they weigh you so they know what kind of harness type to give you. But they don't make you like look at whatever number pops up. It's just for safety purposes because I know sometimes that's drif difficult or triggering for people so don't worry about that. It's just to keep you safe and then they give you your gear which includes the harness and a vest and then part of what was going on with having multiple guides was so multiple people could check your gear yeah, so you were double, and make sure checked. you were safe. Yeah. And then they also had a stand where you could fill up your water bottles, and then those were clipped with a little carabiner to your vest. Mm -hmm. So you always had water on your person because it did get, I mean, it was a lot. It was a very active tour, mm -hmm. but they get you all dressed up. And even the camera has to be able to be clipped to the vest. Yes. You can't have GoPro. anything kind of free. No, I, I have this one. Oh, okay. Um, my little Canon camera that I that we're recording this on right now um, is what I used for this whole tour. It was I just clipped the kind of wrist strap to the vest and was good to go. But yeah, got all of our gear set up. They kind of took like pictures as as starting out, ready to go, and yeah, that we were off. And our first stop was kind of weird. It was kind of hiking. Yeah. Well, the first step was basically you hiked through public areas. And then they just like led you up a hill into the woods. Yes. So then you're going up a hill into the woods and your first stop was the hippos, which I was very excited about. But along the way, one of the older members of our party somehow cut his leg. 
but the tour guide sprang into action and gave him band-aids and made sure he was okay and able to continue and he finished the tour and was fine but that was kind of the excitement on the way to the hippos so you get to the hippos you have one of the people from Animal Kingdom there ready to answer any questions and they also start using those harnesses right away. Yes. Because to go out into the area overlooking the hippos, you have to be clipped in. So if you fall, you will not fall into the hippos area. I think I, I, think I have a video kind of showing the process of clipping in or whatever, walking through. It's like a little metal bar that goes around that you are just attached to so you can you have some freedom to go out, but not too far out, essentially. And basically, to keep you from being hippo food or yes. other animal food. Yes, which comes later. But we started with the hippos, and you can ask any questions, which of course I started right in because I love to learn. And the two that we saw were actually a father-son pair, mm -hmm. which they said was uncommon because usually males don't get along. And then of course I'm asking, is the mom? still an animal kingdom and so on and so forth and they were just ready to answer any question that we had yeah and the mom was still at animal kingdom yes she just wasn't with them for the day she was with all the, all the other girls she was with the ladies girls trip to animal kingdom indeed i think one of the coolest parts though and i might have some videos showing it too is you could see the safari trucks just kind of drive by as we're just standing on this ledge overlooking the hippos mm -hmm. made us feel very special and whatnot but the hippos did not want to hang out, though. No, they were tired. They didn't really want to eat. But basically, they hit two sticks together. That's the best way to describe it. And it makes a loud... Or no, it was a bucket. Did it was a bucket. On the bucket. He hits the bucket, and then if the hippos come on over, then you can feed them. But for our Wild Africa trek, the hippos did not come. So we did not get to feed the hippos, which is a part of the Wild Africa Trek. But the whole thing with the Wild Africa Trek is, it's only if the animals are willing. Right. They're not going to force the animals to do anything, so it's... And they also don't want to reinforce behaviors right. of like, I'm ignoring you. True. Here, I'll get a treat anyway. So, you know. But... It was still really cool to be able to ask questions and to see them swimming around and learn about these two dude hippos hanging out at Animal Kingdom. Yeah. And then we kept hiking. Yes. I think the next stop was the most active part, right? Well, we had to do the over the crocodiles and through the yes. woods to the safari truck we go, basically. Yes. So... The most active part of the Wild Africa Trek is the kind of rope bridge course-esque thing you have to do. You cross two very large rope bridges um, over the other hippo pool and the crocodiles. So this was really cool. So if you're afraid of heights... Not for you. This is not the tour for you. Right. Um, you are very high up in the air. And if you are ever on the Kilimanjaro Safaris attraction and you look up kind of near the crocodiles area, you will see these rope bridges. So if you do this trek, you are on those bridges. Mm -hmm. um, very, very cool, though. The, bit, the hardest thing was how much space was between the boards. And some of them were made to look, like, broken. So not it was, really I mean, it was on those, but... It was themed, and yeah. I did find the older adults in our party did fine, the young woman in our party did fine. I'm 5'2", so basically in the bigger spaces I had to just hold on to the ropes because you're not just like leaping from board to board. You can hang on to the ropes and just take like a big old step. Right. Which was not impossible and I felt safe knowing that I was clipped in with my harness so even if I, for some reason, didn't make it, there's also like a net underneath too. So there's all these different fail safes to keep you safe. Yeah. But that is something to keep in mind that do your leg stretches before you try to do this because you're not quite doing lunges, but big steps. Yeah. And there's basically three towers. So the first one's where you start 
And then on the second one and the last one, they have a, a photographer to kind of capture everything happening along the way. Um, the one was nice because you went before I did, so there was there's some pictures where you could see me in the background of you, of you. so that was pretty cool. Uh, I was just recording the whole time, so yeah, lots of, lots of fun. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I yes. was excited. I was a little surprised by how much space was between some of the boards, but once I got my rhythm, right. I was fine. Yeah. And it was cool to be looking over at the crocodiles, going like, oh my gosh, it's thrilling, but I'm also safe up here. Yeah, true. So, lots of fun with the rope, cor rope bridge course thing. And then after that, immediately at the bottom of that third tower is another one of those kind of like pulley system. Where or, you clip in for the crocodiles. Yes, so, so just with the hippos, now we are able to like kind of dangle over the crocodiles or overlook them. And again, ask questions. Yeah. And again, take pictures. Yes. So we're posed in front of the crocodiles in one picture. Yeah. But they were just willing to answer any sort of question, like why were some in the water and some on kind of the beach area and it's pecking order, you know? Right. So then I ask, okay, well then who's the top croc? And they just said, it's whoever's closest to us and on top of the other ones. Right. <laughs> There's no real one in charge, but like the ones piled on top of the others near the land, the ones in the water, no. Yeah. But they were also part of a study, the crocodiles that they had there, part of a longevity mm -hmm. study to see how long crocodiles can actually live in captivity. Live in captivity because they, they don't know that. So. This was just a big group that had been together for a long time and they were just seeing what happened. Yeah. So it was also cool to know that because when you're on the regular safari, you don't get that kind of information. Right. And then again, at this point, there's safari trucks going by and they're all looking confused of like, what are we doing out there? Yeah. Um, you feel very cool. You do feel very cool. It's definitely a VIP tour in Animal Kingdom. So. And then after that is when we were able to ditch our harnesses. After a short little walk. Yes. Then the walking was done. Yes. And then the riding in the safari vehicle began. But you ditched your harness and left them there. Mm -hmm. And then you boarded a truck that was not like the ones for the actual safari in Animal Kingdom. Right. More like a, I don't say hay ride, but yeah. kind well, of a similar vibe. There were bench seats around the outsides. Right. So if that gives you... A picture. Yeah. Kind of like a flatbed truck with some benches around the outside and everybody's facing in mm -hmm. to the center. It is covered. Um, but this part was really cool. So this was kind of the bulk of the tour, mm -hmm. or at least, at least like a good third of it, I would say. And it's basically just a very personalized safari mm -hmm. where it is, you, you, you are driving through the attraction of Kilimanjaro safaris, except this truck will pull over in several different points and also answer any questions you might have, plus give you all the fun facts that they give you on the, the ride and whatnot as but well. But they also went over into other areas that were more secluded. Right. We saw all the giraffes hanging out, yeah. waiting for food. Very true. <laughs> and just, it was really clo close and cool and just, again, oh, the leopard is all the way over there and you can't really see it from the truck so they back in so you can see straight on right. where the leopard is hiding and also they're taking pictures along the way so when you check your photo pass later you can see that oh they took a zoomed out picture of this leopard that i couldn't see super well but there it is mm -hmm. so that's another element that's like oh that's nice i remember that part of the tour right because that that's the really cool thing to do with the pictures, is they're not just taking pictures of you, but they're taking pictures of all the animals, so you don't really have to worry about bringing a camera, because they are just there to give you everything that you were seeing that day. Mm -hmm. So that was another cool aspect. Um, obviously they're not recording things, so still wanted to bring that for that purposes, but yeah, very cool. Got to see close-ups of the cheetahs and the giraffes and the rhinos. Um, was it a cheetah, not a leopard? I think it was cheetah. Well, dang. But close enough. Okay. Um, we saw the elephants. We did. And we saw 
um, kind of a part of the Elton area that I hadn't seen before, like a different perspective, because we were up on a hill a little bit. Um, but we also saw the other tour happening, the Caring for Giants, which is just kind of like a close-up encounter with just the elephants. So kind of cool to see that tour going on as well. But after driving around a little bit, took a little break, and we stopped for lunch at a little shack in the middle of the savannah. So got to eat among all of the wildebeest and giraffes and nice view cattle. of the flamingos yes right right next to the flamingo pond so if you're on the ride and you're passing the flamingo, flamingo pond and the flamingos are to your left this this kind of shack area Building. is just to the right um so as far as the food that we had here our tour guide actually explained it very well so i will put that clip in right here that orchid is an edible orchid called a dendrobium orchid. You can eat it if you want to, kind of tastes like a crunchy lettuce. If you're not a fan of lettuce or not a fan of, uh, fan of any flowers, then wear it around your ear. It looks really pretty. In the top half of the tin, you'll find the following items. I'm going to start with dessert first. You see something that's in a wrapper off to the side there. That is a granola bar. That's the only item that is not of uh, African inspiration. It's our, from our friends over at Tiffin's, who actually don't even make it for the restaurant. They location to get our chef knows our chef and that chef made that for them uh, at some kind of gathering and you like it so much so I want that for my African chef. so enjoy that might change your whole perception on granola bar if you don't like it already uh, the rest of your tin you have some uh, pita rounds which I like to use on the cheese and prosciutto we got mozzarella cheese and prosciutto wrapped in we also have uh, uh, roasted pepper hummus which also is a very good dipping sauce for the pita rounds and you have an olive mix and a bamboo spoon to help you eat those items. But wait, there's more. So lift them very carefully and take a look at the bottom half of the tin. There you'll find a little fruit salad of uh, melon and pineapple that has a glaze of honey, ginger, and mint. You also have some tandoori shrimp. Uh, and then you also will have um, a chicken wrap that has harissa aioli. So you've got your work cut out for you. And something he didn't mention in that clip was that for drinking purposes, they also had like three giant bottles of pog juice so that was very fun as well and it just they kept it coming yes um but this food was delicious mm -hmm. i don't think he mentioned in the clip that i have but all the food with the exception of the granola bar which he did mention is from tiffin's was from tusker house so all made right in animal kingdom all made specifically for this tour and yeah they, they just kind of had coolers on the truck the whole time we were riding around with all, with all the food ready so everything is cold but it was so good mm -hmm. the i mean we have picky eater and adventurous eater and we were both very happy yes the shrimp was very good the chicken wrap was fantastic yeah, i really liked that the the fruit was a nice little like refreshing yes. aspect i liked the um hummus in, yes. the, in the top part the prosciutto and mozzarella was a little w weird. Wasn't in the prosciutto, or wasn't a fan of that. But it, it just liked the mozzarella. Yeah. So. But I loved the granola bar. It was very good. That was fantastic. Very like heavy on like the honey flavor. I feel like it had some kind of raisin aspects to it as well. Very good granola bar. And you can only get that on the tour. So that was a lot, lot of fun. It was cool to kind of eat it out of a tiffin, and we can learn what, it, what a tiffin actually is. Um, for a kind of preview of what was to come that that evening. So if you're a granola bar aficionado. Yeah, there you go. Who's not afraid of heights. Another reason to take this tour. Indeed. And then after lunch, we had about 30, 45 minutes to eat lunch, I think. Yeah, like they did not rush us. No, not at all. And then they also took pictures with the Savannah behind you. So like cutesy, yeah. dramatic you know, live in the dream on the African savanna photos. Yes, and this kind of eating area was also where the bathrooms were. Yes, so this was your first bathroom break opportunity. Yes. So at this point we were like an hour and a half, two hours in, had had the half hour-ish for food, and then finished up the tour back on the safari truck mm -hmm. to see the rest of the savanna. The savanna, the ride. Um, I can't remember what came after. The lions were after that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know it ends with the Nigerian dwarf goats as well. But again, even just 
like that part where on the ride you go by, you go past it so fast you don't really know what you're looking at and i know that in our experience we just kind of like stopped they told us a couple things and then we kept going right so it's cool to have the ability to do that but yeah overall loved this tour yes definitely our, worth it our guides were awesome mm -hmm. they just really bent over backwards to answer any question that yeah. we threw their way and just were so incredibly accommodating even if it was like somebody wants to take a picture then we would stop the truck and then whoever wanted to could take whatever picture they wanted right. even though they were taking photos they were very kind about anything that you could possibly want to know and they also just were super safety conscious super friendly it was just disney at its best yeah so Very that's much so. that's pretty much the best way to describe it and it also you're like oh gosh it costs quite a bit but the money goes to the animals yeah at least a portion of it gets donated to disney's conservation funds so it does go back to the animals and all of what disney is doing for animal kingdom and keeping everybody kind of fed and animal wise as well as giving back to their conservation fund and even the tips even yes. though the guides were so awesome, they can't accept tips. And if you do give them any sort of tip, it goes to the conservation fund. Yes, because we, we did we did give a tip, but they said this is just gonna go right, to, right back to the animals. So, mm -hmm. so that's another nice thing to hear and nice thing that they're doing. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. It was just a really extremely cool experience. It was active, it was exciting, but also very relaxing. Mm -hmm. We had a, the lunch was just a really wonderful relaxing time and just, yes. I don't think either of us wanted the tour to end. No. There was no time on the tour that we were like, let's speed this up, like at all. Yeah. We were just with it every minute. And I think we would definitely recommend this again. For sure. And I think we'd both be willing to do it again. Yep. That's how good it was. Yes, 100%. And I'm also interested in, um, they have another tour, if you are not interested in the height aspect of it, or kind of just the active part of it, yeah. called Savor the Savannah. I don't know if the food is different, but it basically just takes you out on the truck part of the tour, and you stop at the same hut that we stopped at for our lunch, and you spend a little bit longer there, you get alcohol, and you get dinner, I think it's, I think it's an evening one. Um, but you're just kind of spending your evening out on the Savannah, don't know how much that one is, but that's another one that we'll keep if, our eye on for the future. If you're interested, but think, I don't know about hiking in a ropes course, basically. Right. There are options. Yeah. So a lot of fun with that. That was such a great way to kick off our day at Animal Kingdom. And just something really special for our honeymoon. Right. Um, after that, we just kind of bopped around Animal Kingdom. It was very hot. Yes, very hot. Very hot. And we had a reservation that we couldn't move up. Right. And we were just trying to kind of kill time up until it was time to eat again. And then we ate at... Tiffin's. Yes, my first time at Tiffin's. And my probably favorite restaurant or property at this point. So, what were your thoughts on Tiffin's? I thought it was very good. I really enjoyed what I had there. I had a margarita, watermelon margarita, and I can't remember. It's called the High Tower Rocks. High Tower Rocks. And it was good. It wasn't my favorite margarita because I'm kind of a classic lime gal myself. But it was good. It was definitely drinkable. And then you had... I had two drinks. First drink I had was the Snow Leopard Salvation, which is kind of like their take on a Moscow Mule, vodka, ginger beer, and then some other, I feel like tangerine liqueur or something in there as well. That was very good. I really liked that one a lot. Um, not really a vodka-ish person. I tend to go more the whiskey route, but it was light, refreshing. And then my second drink was the Jen's Tattoo, just because I've seen this one be pretty popular and it is like visually pretty cool, um, but very, very sweet. But this one was topped with a little flower, and like a can candied, hibiscus flower i believe it was um but very very sweet i don't remember what was in it but i'll put that down below as per usual but yeah we both got the butter chicken we did 
which was once again incredible. You described it very well flavor-wise. To my uncultured palate, the sauce tasted a bit like chicken tortilla soup. Thicker, but... But thick. Yeah. So if you're like me and like, I don't know, I've never tried this before, but you're into chicken tortilla soup, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. It's good. And then our lovely waitress here, since we were on our honeymoon, yes. she did give us a little something special. And this was probably one of the coolest celebration desserts that mm -hmm. we've seen at this point. Um, kind of like a platter of a little sampling of random things. There was like a strawberry cheesecake thing on there. Which was my favorite. There was a chocolate mousse, which was my favorite. There was, I think, a brownie on there as well. And there was some like candied guava things as well, like gummies. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, very lovely dinner at Tiffin's, kind of early dinner. Early dinner. Um, we did call it an early night at Animal Kingdom just because we had such a busy, active morning. And it was very warm. And very hot, yes. So after Tiffin's, we headed back to the Poly, just kind of relaxed a little bit. And then... And pack up a bit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We had to pack up because we were leaving the Poly for the next day, going to a different resort, which you'll have to wait till the next video to see where we go. But went back to the Poly, and after packing up, we watched the fireworks Disney, Disney Enchantment from our patio, which was very nice. Mm -hmm. So tried to line it up by playing the music on my phone, but... It's okay. Didn't work out too well. But yeah, still lovely to see the fireworks. Um, you do, you cannot hear the music from the from the buildings of the Powell. You can from the public beach, mm -hmm. kind of by the pool area. But still lovely to see the fireworks. Mm -hmm. Great view that we had. And looking back now, I think this was one of my favorite days from our honeymoon. Yeah. Just because even with the the crazy heat of the day that we were living in after the Wild Africa Trek. It was just really incredible experience doing that tour, a really wonderful dinner, and then just a really lovely night watching the fireworks. Yeah, I agree. Great day and overall for sure. But I think that will do it for our Animal Kingdom day, day four, I think. Now that you've listened to us gush forever. Yes. This might be a pretty, pretty long video, but that's okay. So, whatever day this is, I think it's day four. Um, it was the Wednesday. Yes. There we go. But that will do it for our Animal Kingdom Day. So, next video, next week's video, will be our Epcot Day for Cinco de Mayo, which was not planned, no. but lots of fun. Um, but yeah. So, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. See you real soon.